Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest on the plans to abolish thousands of EU era rules and regulations and a, a self-destructive act so massive you'll see it from space if it ever happens. But the chances of it happening arguably just increased a bit after Rishi Sunak put his shoulder behind the move resulting in all amendments to the bill being defeated as the proposed legislation now passes to the House of Lords. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So someone was asking me a few days ago if I thought the Conservative Brexiteers thought that this was their last chance before they lost power and that's why they were going so hard. I would go further. I think this, I think they believe it's their last chance ever. Consider, we've left the EU, we've left the single market, we've left the customs union. They've also succeeded in poisoning the well of political debate on the issue to the point where, you know, almost nobody can talk the truth about, about Brexit. You know, Labour can't tell the truth about Brexit. You know, it's, it's, they've now got to say they're going to make Brexit work. The prospect of a quick reversal is off the cards. All we can hope for is a change of direction after the next election, which is at least promised. But the, the Brexiteers are still not satisfied. They know that this is their last shot to get what they really want. And they've got very little time now. They've got this year. That's it. You know, and, and what they want is massive deregulation. Now, under normal circumstances, the level of deregulation that they would want would be impossible to achieve. It would need to be, you'd need to present a bill to Parliament, they would debate it, committees would consider it. Imagine the media reporting on plans to abolish statutory rights to annual leave or sick pay. Imagine even Tory MPs thinking that they can vote to abolish those rights and still be elected next time round. But this retained EU law bill is perfect for Brexiteers. It allows them to abolish thousands of rules and regulations en masse because they just get to say, well, they're, they're EU rules, they're EU rules. They're not EU rules. They were EU rules. Now they're not the British rules. We spent years copying them onto the UK statute books. Parliament's already gone through that process. But no, 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 no. No, that's not what they're saying. There'll be no debate on individual rules because there's no time. And it's all justified because they were rules we adopted as EU members. Never mind that we came up with most of them and, and agreed almost all the rest. This isn't looking to see if there's any regulations that are no longer benefiting us outside the EU. Maybe we should change them a bit or repeal them for our own interest. No, no, no. This is a bonfire of rights and protections. They call it a bonfire of red tape. It's a bonfire of rights and protections. If they succeed... It will also mean they lose the next election so hard they can kiss goodbye to power for a generation. Anyone who wants to replace Rishi Sunak as Tory leader after the next election will be signing up for a right royal ass kicking at the following election. Surely it would make more sense to go more slowly on these reforms. You know, focus on retaining power. This is what Conservatives used to do. You know, you, you do what's necessary to win power and you... You go slowly, slowly, like the frog in the boiling pot. Just enough pain that you can get away with it. It doesn't cost you the election. But what we're getting these days is reckless abandon. And why? I think there are two major reasons. This is speculation on my part. The first relates to some analysis I referred to in a previous video recently, that Generation X is not turning conservative as sharply as previous generations as they move into middle age. Millennials are actively turned off by conservative politics. If the trends continue, and there's good reason to suppose they will, then future conservatives will not be able to get away with the lurchers to the far right as they do today. In other words, the real goals of Brexit for the likes of the ERG will not be attainable. They may well feel that this is their last year or two in power, forever. Not that this is the last time the Conservative Party will be in power, but the last time that they will. Remember, they are not the Conservative Party. They are far-right infiltrators, uh, you know, creamed off from the finest that the BNP and UKIP had to offer, who took advantage of a succession of weak leaders and now have their hands firmly on the tiller of the ship of state. Second reason is that even if emerging generations of voters were behaving in the same, in the same way as earlier ones, 
they may still feel that Brexit can't maintain its current course for long. In fact, they know it's already deeply unpopular. You see a few Brexit supporters trying to claim that actually Brexit's going well, but these are few and far between. They're not really credible. Brexiteers in Parliament make no attempt to say Brexit's going well. The likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg, Steve Baker, they don't say Brexit's going well. They just come up with excuses instead. These Brexiteers have been busy trying to blame Remainers again. Now it's, it's all the fault of Remainers in Westminster and Whitehall, bemoans the spectator, and, and happily circulated by a load of Tory Brexiteers. The Spectator, of course, possibly the most right-wing outlet in anything like decent circulation. At the last election, it argued for people to physically restrain their, their voting-age teenage children to stop them voting Labour. Drug them if necessary, it said. But anyway, remain as responsible. Nonsense, of course. But a sign that they know they cannot defend the way Brexit has gone. So they have to blame someone. It's like everything, isn't it? You know, they put their ideas into practice. Oh, it all goes badly wrong. Who'd have thought it? Oh, better blame someone. Oh, and if you if you find their complaints that Remainers are ruining Brexit annoying now, just you wait. See, up until now, it's been Brexiteers in charge of everything. It's all on them. After the next election, the government would be led by someone who campaigned hard to avoid leaving the EU altogether. The cries of Remain a betrayal will be deafening. Oh, you think it's bad now? Just you wait. But these two factors mean that at whatever point the Tories return to power, they are unlikely to be able to continue with such a hard Brexit line. The glamour of Brexit will have been dispelled. It'll be gone. And all that will be left of Brexit within another year or so is trying to make the best of things. That's, that's where most people are now. Can we just, well, we've left now. Can we make the best of it? There won't be much patience uh, for people talking about opportunities before very long, especially from people who just seem to get richer while the rest were getting poorer. So, all right, you talking about opportunities from your castle, I've got to go to the food bank again. You know, when I last talked about the retained EU law bill, I did wonder at the time. So Jacob Rees-Mogg was clearly going for it. And I wondered, so what would his ERG colleagues be like? Are they, is there enough of them? Are they determined enough, you know, to push this issue? Are they really going for it? It seems they probably are. Because Rishi Sunak has come out heavily in favour of not just pressing ahead with the bill, but abolishing the rules at the end of the year. You know, his government think we should be placated by, by saying, oh, don't worry, we're going, to have a, we're going to have a comprehensive timetable for replacing all of these rules and regulations with our own British versions. Yeah, timetable that will take years. In the meantime, all those rights and regulations will not exist, plunging businesses into absolute chaos. I mean, it's not just that there will be existing rules that businesses no longer have to follow. It's that nobody will know what they are or what they mean. Consider that lots of small businesses in particular are still struggling with Brexit red tape. That's because it's complicated and they've never needed to deal with anything like it before. So they haven't got the expertise to. They don't have the time to become expert in it, to become proficient enough to deal with it in a lot of cases. Small business. Imagine all these business owners now trying to work out how the abolition of thousands of rules affects them. They're not legal experts either. You know, it's not going to remove red tape. It's going to create it. They don't know what they can do anymore. There's going to be a lot of high court cases needed to redefine what our regulatory framework looks like from next year. And a, and a business is going to believe a minister if a minister says, oh, you know, but, you know, you just don't have to do this thing. Remember, before Brexit, Boris Johnson said, you know, if anyone gets, uh, you have to deal with any paperwork for importing goods from Britain to Northern Ireland, you just throw them in the bin or send them to me and I'll throw them in the bin for you. How did that go? Are you going to trust a minister? Because when you go to court, when you're taken to court, because it actually turns out you have broken the law, the judge isn't going to be impressed with, well, I heard some Tory minister saying I could do it. This will be very off-putting to investors, as if enough of them haven't already sent their business elsewhere. The government also say, they're not using this bill to remove workers' rights because that's going to be the big political hot potato. No, of course we're not going to use these to remove workers' rights. All right. If that's the case, why don't you make it clear in the bill that it will exclude employment law then? They haven't done that. 
This is just like when Boris Johnson moved workers' rights from the legally part binding part of the EU withdrawal agreement to the non-legally binding what was called the political declaration. He insisted, no, 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 workers' rights were not under threat at all. Of course not. Oh, yes. Yeah, so why have you moved them then? Oh, well, because, you know, it's just easier to photocopy that way. Uh-huh. But calming ruffled feathers in public is one thing. Most voters don't know what this bill is. Otherwise, there'd be uproar. But I'll tell you something. Implement it as it currently exists. Implement it as the government say they're going to implement it. People know all about it in 2024. If the Conservatives thought that they had to get rid of Liz Truss smartish before that lettuce rotted, before, before they lost every seat in the land, just wait to see how they'll react if Sunak actually abolishes all of their cherished rights and protections. In fact, the situation is so insane. I cannot, in all conscience, think that Sunak expects to go ahead with it, and yet he has done obviously. So what's the thinking? I think maybe he expects the House of Lords to just block it. Unless I've missed something, I couldn't even find an ambiguous promise in their 2019 manifesto that allows them to claim a public mandate for this bill. You know, they, they can try and go, oh, it's implicit, it's implicit. No, there's no such thing as implicit. It's not in the manifesto that I can see. So there's no mandate for it. That means the House of Lords don't have to allow it through. They are perfectly within their rights to say, you have no mandate for this. There's no cross-party support for this. We're just going to sink the whole thing. If Sunak refuses at any rate to allow serious amendments, they'll amend it first. They won't just sink it, I suspect. They'll put in the sort of amendments that were voted down this week. You know, Sunak was just a few weeks ago, remember, suggesting that he will have to compromise with the Lords on it. So maybe some serious amendments will come through. Maybe the amendments will allow it to stop coming into force until Labour can come in and then they can just abolish it themselves. But just the language from Sunak this week was a bit of a change and it just makes me think the ERG are pushing this. Or as someone suggested to me, maybe Sunak is offering them this in return for them agreeing to a Northern Ireland Protocol deal. I don't know. You know, but what I do know is that if the Lords do hold firm on this and if Sunak doesn't accept reasonable amendments, there's probably not time for him to ram it through the Lords before the election. Normally, if the Lords won't let something do, you just go, OK, fine, we'll leave it till the next session of Parliament, then I'll just ram it through. But there's not enough time to do that before the election. Mind you, I'll bet there's some rejoiners thinking that if this does pass, if it does go ahead, it will at least sink Brexit much more quickly. Look at what the mini-budget did for Brexit views amongst the public. Imagine what this would do. But for those who'd see just too much damage in this bill, and I am one of them, we're basically now in a position where the ERG clearly have the Prime Minister's feet to the fire, and we are now reliant upon unelected parliamentarians to protect us. A house of unelected parliamentarians that Boris Johnson has stuffed with his cronies. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.